Hello everyone. Today's objective is graphing exponential models. To start off, the graph of the growth functions rapidly goes up to the right, while decay function drops quickly and then level out to the right. If the value of the function is greater than one, then the function is a growth function because it's basic, your principal plus whatever is extra. If the base is greater than zero but less than one, that means it's smaller than what you have, but definitely is is going down but it cannot be negative then says the function is decaying that means it's just going down so this is a growth function that's a decay function this is greater than one and that is between zero and one you can never have negative because we don't have this going towards negative so now increasing or decreasing a property although in an exponential function the constant a is in the function fx equals a times b to the nth power can be either positive or negative. In many applications, representatives, the initial amount of some quantity like the initial number of bacteria, the initial number of investment, the initial number of animal in a certain region, for example. In this case, the A has to be greater than zero. There cannot be any negative number when you're talking about physical things like that. So let's take a look at example number one. For the following function, identify the value of A and B and compare the graph of those functions. A in this case is 3 and B is 2. The B is going to go up. B is going to be increasing. Learning from what we previous talked about, when you're talking about the A, which is the initial value when x equals 0, then the B is the multiplier when how much do you multiply from one turn to the next. Going up is multiplied by 2. So because the B is greater than 1, therefore it's going to be a growth exponential function. Then that if you take a look at the next one, you have to multiply by a half to decrease it. Half of a is 4, half of 4 is 2. So if you just keep multiplying by half, that is going to go you get your all your number. a is 4 and b in this case is between a, b is a half and b is between 0 and 1. So therefore is a decay exponential function. So notice going up is a growth function, coming down is a decay function and we will never cross 0 because we will never have anything in things for example bacteria animal into the negative numbers so therefore it doesn't work in the situation and this one is going to be B in between 1 and 0 summarize that for you again in both cases above a is greater than 0 one of them is going to be 3 the other one is going to be 4 and we can see the first graph B is bigger than 1 and the graph is increasing and the second graph where B is between 0 and 1 then graph is decreasing definition definition grows exponential gives an exponential function fx equals a times b to the n power where a is greater than zero b is greater than zero then the function is said to grow exponentially decay exponentially given an exponential function f equals a times b to the nth power where a is still bigger than zero because if it's not this cannot be negative if zero a b is between zero and one then the function is to be decay exponentially so you guys have to be able to identify where's the a where is the b is the b going bigger than one or is the b between zero and one going on to the example number two for example number two use the graph of, of the exponential function f given below to answer the following right here's your graph a make an input output table with the giving order pairs and continue the pattern so let's take a look if you have the numbers just fill it in so for example number two if you think about it um the zero is the initial show zero when x equals zero then you get three so therefore your a is equal to three and then your b is your multiplier in this case is two so the equation is going to be f of x equals a which is three times two times the x there's a, your exponential growth and the reason it's growth is because your multiplier is two what is the number pick out your order pair so please fill it out check back with your answer the order pair so if you look at if you are at one it's going to be one and Six. If you're going to be at 2, x equals 2, it's 12 and uh, 2 and 12. What match 3? Well, 0 matches the 3. And what matches the 12? Well, the again, 2 matches the 12. So therefore, it's all into the table. And to generate the table, because my multiplier is 2, so 3 times 2, 6 times 2, 12 times 2, 24 times 2, and that gives me the 48. That's example number 2. Please try example number 3. They are exactly like example number 2. And here's what I have for example number 
number three. My multiplier is moving up by four, and my initial value is two right here, and moving up by four. And then if I, that's how I write my equation, initial, and that's my multiplier, one comma a right here, and f g two right here match up to thirty two, and one minus one match up to a, three match up one twenty eight, and that example number three. Hi, objective for section six point six is exponential regression model. So there's we are adding one more regression into our vocabulary. We done linear, we done quadratic. Now we are going to do an exponential regression. Pretty much it's gonna be the same. So let's read through everything. Use the base multiplier to find the exponential model. Definition of exponentially related data. If constant changing in output are associated with constant factor changing uh, changes in the output factor, that means multiplication factor right here. Okay. Then the data are exponentially related. In this case, we can fit the exponential model into a, which is initial, b, which is multiplier, and to the nth power. So do not forget that b is multiplier you are multiplying. So a is the output when the input is zero. So that's x equals zero. b is the base multiplier for the output value as the input value increased by one. How many times do they multiply? That's all they are saying. The same thing right here again. Let's read on to example number one. Suppose your table has three million bacteria on it as of 11 o'clock a.m. today. Also suppose that one bacterium separates into two bacteria. That means one bacteria into two every hour on an average. A. Fill in the input output table. Let t equals the hour from 11 a.m. today. Explain why this data can be modeled with an exponential model. So let's fill out the data. So suppose the three million, that means my at 11 o'clock, I have three millions every 11 o'clock today. Also suppose that one bacteria split into two. So therefore my multiplier is two. This is my table I filled out because I just take three times two, six times two, 12 times two. Those are the way I got my table. Explain why this data can be modeled with an exponential model. Well, the reason for that is we have an exponential model. We have A is the beginning value or initial value, and B is the base multiplier, and M for the time table or time period. And then so therefore, those are the number right here. Now, how do I come up with a three? Because I gave three spots, start with a zero, one hour, two hour, three hour. So that's why I put down three. So if you try to plug this formula in right here, you will get the 24. So after three hours, there will be 24 million bacteria on your desktop. So going on to letter D, assuming your desk is not clean with the cleaner and no extra bacteria are added, predict the number of bacteria that will be on your table by uh, desk by 11 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. Well, the first thing I decided the time tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. is going to be 12 hours. So that means my N or my T is going to be 12 and there's my T or N in this case. So the same thing with the uh, uh, initial is three, 3 million bacteria multiplier is doubling and then to how long of the time period. And therefore I have 12,288 million bacteria and that's what I wrote down for answer. 12 hours later, the desktop will have 12,288 million bacteria on the on there. Example number two, the, an account earns 5% interest annually. At the start of 2013, 1,000 was placed into the account. A, the following input output table below related to the year since 2013 and the amount of money in the account. 2013, we have $1,000 because that's what they say in the question. The way I calculate the first year is I take the amount of money, which is a thousand times 0 0.05. And then I got my second year. Now the thing is, if I times the second year, I still have to add in the a thousand dollars I had before. So therefore that's going to be my thousand fifty dollars. Then I use a thousand fifty dollars times another 0 0.05. So my multiplier is 0 0.05 plus original value. I have to add in every single time. That's a hundred percent so that's a whole so therefore i am going to add on to it 
and that's that one it become one oh five original base and times one point oh five each time it is exponential me at the beginning and the five percent interest each year so then that will give me my exponential growth and my exponential growth i'm gonna say hey it's going to be the beginning value which is right here that's a thousand and the base every single time plus the 0.05 percent addition of the interest you have to add in the base which is the thousand every single time plus how much it goes up every single year and that's gonna be the t amount how many years gonna be so in this case if you go on to one year you should get 1050 it should be if you go on to two years it's going to be 110250 if you go on to three years it's gonna be 1157.625 and then if you round it because we only have two decimal places it should be 1157 6.63 and that is three years down the line how much money you will be making so besides the principal you made about 157 dollars and 63 cents for the interest if they pay you five percent talking about finding the constant percentage rate of change and there is actually a formula to it to compute the amount in the account a that's the initial account the amount that's going to be at the end after all the interest that's a that earns annual interest rate is R that's the five percent that we did before after t years or it could be n depends on the situation there is a formula in math textbook that look as follow what you have p stand for how many years equals p p stand for principal beginning amount and you have the one one is the base plus r r stand for the interest in percentage and t stand for the year when you do that you can pretty much figure out what we did before in the second example since it's three years our t should be three so let's take a look at d use your equation from example number two fill the input output table to determine how much money is in the account after 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years round the answer to the nearest dollar so then compute the amount of interest dollar in each 10 years interval so that's what we're going to do so pause the video go ahead do that after doing all the calculation using using the example y equals 1000 times 1 plus 0 0.05 percent and raise to the t and the t is where i put in my 10 my 20 my 30 my 40 that one thousand dollars in and every single year if i just make five percent i can in 40 years i'll make seven thousand thirty nine dollars and ninety nine cents imagine all those money if you just put it in and then if you can make some sort of investment you can have lots and lots and lots more money f is asking what is the moral of the story when people invest money it is very important to know how long it takes that money to double this amount of time is called the double time doubling time when the amount when amounts are growing exponentially so if you look at the amount that what they have remember if you save money early you have much much longer time period to grow your money see the difference if you're starting saving in 40 years so if you start in your 20s in 40 years which is 60 you will have seven thousand if you start saving at your 30 and then you have to wait until your 70 before you have that much in case the doubling time is important so doubling time if quantity is grow growing exponentially the double time is the amount of time it takes for that quantity to double doubling will be two so what that's going to be like and that's what we are trying to find out for example number three so for example number three find the doubling time for the account example number three using the interest figure uh, feature on your calculator or your table on your calculator run the answer to the nearest whole number the y is going to be 2000 where we're going to want to end it up 1000 and 1 plus 0 0.05 t so now we are solving for t and the way we're going to do this is we're going to put it in a table and then the answer when you punch in the calculator it will be 15th year it's between 14 and 15 but since we are rounding to the the year that will nearest whole number well if i round down to 14 it didn't make 2000 if i go up to 15 it's a little bit more than 2000 so that's why we go with the 15th year because you need that extra year to make it up to 2000 so here are the steps 
that I'm gonna have you guys try. If you type in y1 in your y equal to functions, you can type in this part right here because that's the base plus the interest rate and to the x, even though we use t, we don't have to get to t, you can use x, t, all those things using the same button and we know how to do that. Then we go on to the y2, the second line and type in 2000 and then use the second table, look for when y1 is just past, past 2000. That's example number three. And then you should be able to locate between 14 and 15. For example number four, you bought a car for 16,000. You expect the car to lose value or depreciate each year. Write a function that related to the value car with the number of years since the car was purchased. Using different scenario below, the car decreased $800 per year. Use a linear model. Y equals 16,000 minus because it decreased 800 per year. So that's T. And that's a linear model because that's a slope intercept form. And then the next question says the car decreased 4% per year using an exponential model. So now, since it is a minus losing 4%, remember the number has to be between 0 and 1. So since it's losing 4%, you're going to take your 100% minus the 4%. So that's going to be the 96% value. After you purchase the next year, it's going to be 96%. Take the car price. Car value is 16,000 times it went down by 4% so it's going to be 0.96 T. It's going to be because it went down 4% every year. So now that's what y equal that the car costs and that's your equation and y is going to be your car value after each year's decreasing. The next um, formula I want to share with you is using using constant percentage rate of change to find an exponential model. R stands for constant percentage rate of change written in decimal. So when you guys notice that the percentage is always changing into decimal, but if you have any problem changing into decimal, just divide by 100 on your calculator. So if it's for example, example is 6%. If you are not sure, you can always change it by saying, hey, it's 6 divided by 100. Think about your percentage to 0. So therefore, you have to use 100 in the bottom. And the next one is y grows exponentially. So y grows exponentially, that means it's going to be increasing. So if it's increasing, it's 1 plus r. That's 1 plus the percentage increasing in the interest. That's 1 plus 0 0.05. And there is your growing much faster. Y d decays exponentially and that will use 1 minus r. Well, think about it. It decays in value in 4% every year. So it's just 1, which is 100% also minus the r. So 1 minus 0 0.04 or 100% minus 4%. So it's really up to you how you want to think about it. So it's 100% minus the 4% or it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.04 and that's going to be the 96% or that's going to be equal to 0.96. So make sure everything is always changing into decimal. Example number five, in a particular area, homes have been depreciated at a rate about 3% a year per year. A home was purchased there in 2013 for $100,000. Use this information to answer the following. So please give it a try and then we can discuss it. The first question says, how can you tell from, um, the letter A says, how can you tell from the wording that you, you can use an exponential function. Well, the reason I know is I can use an exponential function is because if the value goes down, I don't go back to the original value. I go down, I use the value that go down and then take away another 3%. So therefore I had to use exponential function. And then because it's also multiplying by a decimal uh, by a percentage. So I know that's also um, that situation is depreciating. So the B says write an exponential function to describe the relations. I have 100% of the whole house value minus the 3% that give me a year is going down to 3%. So it's only 97% of the house value lot. And that gets changed into 0.97. And there's the equation y equals initial value times 1 minus the r, the equation from before right there, and then times to the t year and or x year. So that's my example b, um, my um b for example number 5. And the c says predict the value of this home in 10 years. That means my 
my x or my t is now 10 years. So when I plug in the calculator, don't forget order of operation. This gets done first if you only have um, those ones that's a little tiny calculate instead of scientific notation. So this gets done first, then times 100,000. So your homes only have $73,743 because it keep depreciates based on the value that keep that depreciates already so that's why um the price keep going down next one so the next thing when a quality is decreasing in value a common value that is studied is the half-life this is looking at the amount of time it takes for that quantity to do reduce in half this amount of time is called the half time when the amount are decreasing exponentially half-life if a quantity is decreasing exponentially the half-life half-life is the amount of the time it takes for that quantity to be reduced in half so in that example is like if you have a hundred bacteria and how long does it take to reduce to down to 50 if you start using certain kind of medicine or if you're getting healthier all those kind of things okay so here's example number six use the information from example number five which is what we just talked about before along with the interest and uh, intersect feature on your calculator which is we talk about it right above here using the calculator part right there all right so what you're going to do is you are going to say hey along with the intersect feature on your calculator or the table i like the table better on your calculator to determine the half-life of a home bought in that area run your answer to the nearest whole number so what we're going to do is we are going to type two equations the y1 equation i want you to write it down y1 equation is going to be the 10 100 000 times 0.97 and that's going to be x equation number two is going to be the house is going to worth half as much 50,000 so now type in your calculator let's see what you get after y1 equals times 0.97 to the x power and y2 equals 50,000 down to the table and found that at 22 year 22 is 51,166 and 23 is 49,631 so therefore because those numbers for me to make sure that $50,000 has passed it will be it, it will take 23 years so there's your answer for example number six so that concludes the notes for today thank you so much for watching